Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, today we've got an exciting new build to share with you guys, and this is the new Trumpeter 35th scale Tiger One late production with Zimmerit. And if you guys watched the review video I did of all the new kits last week, you'll notice that the the Zimmerit inside is a new way of doing it, where they have a sheet of Zimmerit that's been die cut to fit the actual pieces on here. So uh, I did a little review, which we'll put actually in the beginning of this video as well too, to show you the breakdown of how the kit is. And if you want to, you can skip ahead about five minutes and get right to the actual build portion. But if you haven't seen it, it's pretty interesting to see how they've put this kit together. Uh, it looks like it's about a about a medium when it comes to part count, so it shouldn't be too too difficult. They are individual tracks, which unfortunately have solid guide horns when you know Tiger tanks are supposed to be a hollow horn. So we'll probably we might build up a set of those just to try them out, but we'll probably put a set of Fruel model tracks on it since I've got a couple of sets still left behind on it. So. Uh, Excited to start doing it. It's always great to have a new Tiger, especially one that retails for under $50, which is, uh, that's really great, especially with the cost of some of the kits lately. So uh, let's get started on it. Okay, the first kit we're going to look at is the new Trumpeter 35th scale Tiger late production with Zimmerit. And first thing we're going to look at is the hull. It is a bathtub style hull. And if we can zoom in close enough here, even the, the bottom has a really nice roll texture uh, surface to it. And that goes right up into the, uh, the front plates. The, the, uh, the sides are going to get covered with Zimmerit, so won't worry about that. The, the top. Once again, too, they did some nice texturing on any of the cast metal pieces. And everything else looks pretty good. I'm going to just pull out all the parts. I'll take some pictures afterwards and let you see individual pictures of the, uh, of the parts. The tracks are your basic uh, link tracks, or yeah, link tracks that you're going to have to cut out. There is going to be some cleanup because of all the little, uh, little connection points, but those should build up fine enough. And when we get to the turret, there's actually two turrets inside here. And I think it's because of one might have the Zimmerit and one might not. And the reason I say that is because there's some pictures in there, which I'll show you at the end, of the different variants you can make. And one of them is a uh, variant that is after the war that the, uh, the French were using. But uh, this has got some nice texture already on it. So maybe this one would be the after the war one, and this one will be the one that we attach the uh, the Zimmerit plate to. And I know I keep saying attach the Zimmerit plate to, and that's because this is the Zimmerit. And it's kind of an unusual, brilliant design if it works out properly. What they've basically done is they've molded some sheets of plastic that are pre-done with... Uh, you can see how thin they are, with Zimmerit pattern already cut into it. And then they put this on a die cutting machine and that they just die cut out all the pieces that they need that you'll be able to just cut out the last little portion and then glue it. It's ultra, ultra thin. Uh, it's got some nice depth and character to the Zimmerit. It is very uniform. I know we're going to hear some people complain about that, but hey, it's... Uh, it is 35th scale modeling. You can you can probably take this and cut this up and chip it pretty well. But uh, actually, this is a, a pretty clever way of doing the Zimmerit with that if you can make a, a kit that if you don't want to have Zimmerit, or you do, this is actually not too bad. And uh, I think we'll have to build this one up and see how this Zimmerit actually works. But just basing it on this, you can see how well you'll be able to curve it to go around like the, uh, the turret, things like that. The... Uh, Mantlet here is Zimmerited already. It already has Zimmerit on it, so you don't have to worry about putting all that really difficult Zimmerit on. Uh, these were the instructions I was telling you about. Might as well just quickly show them to you. You can see there's quite a few different, sorry about the glare on it. There are quite a few different variants. Plus there's even an additional page. This is the one I was telling you about, the one that's like after the war, late 45. And then the big set of instructions. There is another mantlet inside, as well as the rest of the pieces with, uh, without Zimmerit. And some really nice detail on this kit, including the rolled 
textured on the side piece too. So I guess if you either put the Zimmerit on or you don't, but you will be attaching a separate piece onto the side of the hull. And here is our barrel. Two-piece barrel, I'm fortunate about that because uh, I'd probably use an R&B barrel one just because I hate sanding out that seam on there. The uh, tow cables, the track cables, all that stuff look pretty, pretty nicely molded. You got your turret basket. We've got all of our road wheels, and you guys know about Tigers. They got tons and tons of road wheels you have to build, but uh, they look pretty good. Here is your uh, your rear rear plate, as well as the top of the turret, the gearbox, final drive cut housings, things like that. And actually, I'm very very impressed with the uh, the look of everything. The uh, rolled steel looks pretty good on that. And finally, there's just a couple other sprues. And I have to also compliment Trumpeter 2 on this, the way they package this. All of these sprues, these are the ones that have the uh, suspension arms on it. All of this came wrapped in a, uh, a foam protector to keep anything from, you know, tangling up and getting messed up on it. So you get a couple of those. And you also get photo etch. The photo etch for the grills. And... A little sheet of decals but there wasn't a lot of markings on those vehicles anyway so this is enough to do probably I think five different vehicles they give you the option in there so very very impressed with this kit and especially under fifty dollars guys where are you gonna find find that especially with some of the dragon kits now the dragon kits are all they well last time I saw the retails were all in the, the upper 90s for it so for fifty dollars or less this is a pretty nice looking kit and like I was saying, I'm very impressed with that kit, so I actually will be building this kit up. I can't promise exactly when this video will come out for the build, but the kit doesn't look super difficult, so I think it's something that we can build fairly quickly and easily, and we can really get a chance to try out all that new Zimmerit. Okay, we can start now on the hull, and I've just got done gluing on the backs of these pieces right here. These are the areas where the tow hooks are going to go on. And the very first thing they call out for you to do is you choose whether or not, obviously, you want to do the Zimmerit version or the non-Zimmerit version. We're doing the Zimmerit version because we want to try that out. So you've got these side pieces that have the armor plate on it that have grooves and pieces that fit right in, and then you just have to cut out the Zimmerit. Now, I've done one side already right here, and actually, I think it actually does look pretty good. It holds up real well. It's very similar to what Zimmerit looks like. I mean, it is a little perfect, uh, but I, all in all, I think it looks pretty nice. But let me just show you the, the way I went through this, and I've got all the parts cut out already for the next group. And just using a brand new number 11 blade, just going down the line and trying to keep it as straight as possible what i did was i left just the tiniest little bit of excess on all of these pieces and that is just so we can sand it smooth later on so cutting this out is super simple because it's very very thin plastic Oop, one more we forgot and then it's just a matter of lining it up which you can see that it if I can find the holes there. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, the uh, the die cut holes all line up very, very well. So there's no struggling or anything with that on it. Now, what I'm going to do now is to glue it. If you try, first of all, taking it and putting glue on the, you know, the liquid glue on here, you're, you've got such a big area, and I'm just showing you how I tried it out on the first one. It just dries way too quickly. You can put a little bit of it down as like a, uh, you know, start to firm it up just so it sticks a little bit but I found the best thing to do is just to go down the line and run a little bit right into the seam 
And my advice is rather than squeeze on it so you don't put any fingerprints in it on the, the zimmerated side, take something you know firm and flat like this and squeeze it. I'm using a sanding stick right here. And this way you're not going to damage the other side of the Zimmer because if any liquid glue got on there you inevitably will put a, uh, a little fingerprint or the liquid plastic I should say the liquid glue would obviously damage it no matter what but sometimes a little bit of the liquid plastic and you put a big thumbprint right in the middle of it this right here goes down the line you'll see a little little bead of the uh, liquid plastic come out let that dry we can sand it right off and we end up with that other piece now as we go forward on that I'm gonna finish up the rest of that side and then we can start putting on the uh, the front which we've just cut these pieces out and oh, that goes on the other side here and we will glue these the beginnings of the final drives and it's got all the uh, the housings for it and they all so far everything fits really well including the uh, the arms now the arms I'm just starting to clean up on it but they do have quite a bit of uh, connection points that you will have to go up and clean up, but I'm very happy you can see there is a nice big locking mechanism that you can put it in. So, hey, you can put them in and get it right every time and you know exactly the way the suspension arms are supposed to go. So now I've kind of shown you what we're supposed to do with this bottom portion here. I'm going to go ahead and put all the suspension arms. We're going to glue most of the, the beginnings of the final drive as well as the armor plate with the Zimmeret on the side. Get that all put together and we'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, I'm just about to put in the final drives. We've got all the suspension arms laid in. And so far everything is fit together very, very well. I'm just going to show you this real fast as well. Now here is the uh, the two plates of Zimmeret for the front. Now nothing is marked on any of the Zimmeret but it's pretty straightforward you can kind of figure out there's not a heck of a lot of pieces of Zimmeret and you'll be able to figure out this real thin skinny one right here goes down below here and even this one right here that's been all cut out I was just dry fitting it a minute ago you can see lines up pretty good. The the Zimmerit does not line up and I don't know if that is uh, I have to take a look at another picture of it but you know that the line of Zimmerit if it would have been the same pattern going all the way down onto another surface or it may have been separate like that but just keep that in mind as you uh, start to do it. Now there is a front and back of this Zimmerit as well too and it's pretty clear just keep an eye out for it because although there is a pattern on the other side it's not as deep as uh, as the front side is so i'm going to go ahead and glue those two pieces on and we'll work on making sure that that seam is real real tight right where the two of them meet So if you just got done watching the high speed version of putting this on, you may have noticed that when I flipped this bottom piece around, we got the two rows to line up and I think that looks more accurate on this. So uh, the only thing we might have to do is uh, we're going to keep putting a little liquid cement on this. If we get just that slimy little crack right or that slight little crack right there, we might go back in with a little bit of Vallejo putty and fill that in, but I think if we keep pushing this down we can get it to blend pretty good so so far so good and now we're going to put the uh, the road wheels in the place here and I'm gonna flip it upside down so I can match it to the the diagram so I don't put them on wrong to show you but what I'm basically going to do is for all of the the lower all the road wheels I should say I'm going to glue those into place and that is because if we're going to either put the individual tracks on or the Fruel model tracks on, I think having the road wheels glued down will not uh, hurt us at all. Now, we do not want to glue down the drive sprocket or the, the idler wheel, which I have assembled over here as well. And that is because that is usually the area that's always the most difficult. The, you know, you can slide the tracks down the center here. It's getting the wrap around the drive sprocket or the return idler. That's always the fun part. 
So I am going to go ahead, we're going to glue all the, uh, the road wheels into place right now and secure those. And then we'll come back and start working on the rear portion of the, the vehicle. Okay, now it is time to start applying the Zimmerit to the, the back of the vehicle. And you can see I've already put one little tiny piece right here. This was a separate piece. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you guys. This is fits really, really well around all these things, except for one little minor thing. They're obviously going to be making different variants is the only thing I can think of on this. There is one other little plug. Uh, I'm not actually quite sure what this does on the vehicle, but you can see it's there and it hasn't been cut out. So they want you to go in there and cut this out of the uh, the Zimmerit pattern to put so that little uh, that little thing can stick through. Now it's very close to the top, so we probably will just cut straight down and try to you know try to cut that perfect shape but that is going to be really difficult being the way it is like that so we're going to mess around with that and see how we can work on it and also since we're doing on work showing on stuff and there's a couple of little tabs right here that we just got done sanding off and that is to let the the zimmerit wrap around really well around the turret as well and everything fits really well. I just, I, I don't understand why they didn't die cut that one right there. Like, but like I said, it's probably because there's a different variant coming out that doesn't have that little piece. That would be the only reason I could think of on it. But we'll, we'll work through it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to attempt to try to cut that out the best possible way I can where it doesn't look too messy. And if it does, we might be able to go in with some of the excess plastic around here and fill it in with the other Zimmerit. So we'll probably cut a square out and then come back later and cut the corners around it. So it did work out pretty, pretty well. We cut the little rectangle shape out and now I'm just going and taking that same rectangle and taking these pieces and filling back in the little gaps. And hopefully you can see how that'll just slide up in there a little cement on it we can slide it over and we've already put this side back in and now we'll just work around getting it so actually it's not that that difficult we can even take just the tiniest little bit of putty and fill it in right around there but you can see you can cut it and actually fill it back in pretty well so problem averted. I was a little bit more scared about it than I probably needed to be, but let's see how the top goes. And so I'll work on that for a little while and I'll show you just before we start working on the turret. Wanted to just show you guys too, we've, we've got the, uh, the little bit of the zimmer going all the way around that piece and we'll still fill that in. But uh, the rest of the parts that are going to make up the, uh, the rear here, we've got the, uh, the mufflers and then the shroud that covers it, which Trumpeter has given you even excess little pieces like this that um, add some nice detail. Now, I haven't sanded any of these yet. I just kind of dry fitting them together to show you guys. And then the final final shroud that covers it up here. And that's how it'll fit back there. But you can see that the Zimmerit, after we put a little tiny bit of putty right there, I think we'll have a really nice look. And very, very nice fit. Very uh, Other than having to cut out that little piece, which wasn't very difficult after all. A little scary looking at it, but everything worked out really good. And now that we have the back plate assembled, we can go ahead and attach it to the, to the rear portion of the tank. And the reason I'm so close up right now is I want to show you, they give you a little extra flap of Zimmerit. So once you mate the two together right here, we can go back with some glue. And with a little pressure on each one of the corners, you can see we can actually get a pretty tight little seam that all lines up really well, especially once we glue it. So I think that this Zimmerit is actually working out pretty well. And we did put the last little piece on the bottom down here, and we can get those two to mate up in there as well. So I'm gonna take a little time now, glue this all together, and come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I've just finished up gluing on all the last little sheets of Zimmerit. And I wanna show you how the upper hull goes together now. So we can take this plate and it'll slide right into here and you can see it comes into a really tight fit. Uh, we will glue all this in a minute, but I just wanna show you how it all goes together. And you'll slide all this in and kinda wait for it to click. And that slides in. Now, when I was installing this piece of Zimmerit right here, 
the piece sticks up proud of the actual edge. And it was a good thing I didn't cut that off. And that is because that little edge is supposed to roll over and fill in the little gap right here. So the, how I accomplished that is I took the edge of my X-Acto knife and just rolled over that sheet. And you can see we can get them almost to meet right now. I think with a little glue and a little bit of pushing this down right here, we'll get a really pretty good fit. If not, if there's anything left over, once again, we'll take a little bit of the white Vallejo putty and fill that in. But I think once we get all of this in, because it is pretty tight, that we'll get enough tight enough fit that we can finish that off pretty much just by just rolling that back and forth. And then, of course, glue. Glue is going to help quite a bit with this whole process. So... Uh, now, this step isn't called out for a few minutes. They want you to put all the accessories on top here. Uh, I'm going to check to make sure that there's nothing that comes up from underneath other than the gun, which I've already put on. But I think I'm going to go ahead and assemble the hull as much as I can before I put the rest of the pieces on. And that's just so I can get make sure I've got a really tight fit. Because you're going to have to do a lot of adjusting and holding and stuff. And I don't want to be knocking off all the little accessory pieces that get glued onto the upper hull. So I'm going to experiment with it, see how it works. I think it will, because it doesn't look like there's anything else gets mounted from underneath that we'd have a hard time with. So I'll check that out, put this all together, and show you what it looks like once it's done. And as for the seams, you can see they came out pretty tight over here. All we might do a, just a touch of sanding on that, and then followed up by the white putty. Uh, actually, the sanding probably will take care of it on its own to get a nice, you know, nice seam on it. Okay, we're going to show you how the Zimmerit goes onto the side of the turret here. And like I did on the other piece, you do have to sand this little uh, piece off as well as the two other little nubs. And that is because you have a Zimmerited part here that is going to cover over on that. But I found the easiest way to do this is to just put a little bit of cement just on the very tip part here and then using some hobby clamps just put a couple of them in the front here and that way you can get that portion to lay down and then we'll just start working glue all the way backwards and that way you get a nice tight tight fit because everything has been die cut so perfectly it should all just line up exactly the way it was and you can see even on these squares here uh, we'll work on that for a few seconds and we'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's on so we've let this set up for a little while now and I think it should be firmly tacked into place get all these clamps off and we'll glue this piece on in a minute but what I'm just gonna quickly show you is how the uh, the rest of the inside of the turret goes and initially I thought this was like a secondary turret that the you know like a different option but what I didn't realize was that this actually fits inside of here and you got to get it that lined up just right so the hole in there lines up and this makes up the piece that is gonna hold the uh, the mantlet and the rest of the gun so it's just a matter of gluing these two pieces into place making sure that you also get this one in all at the same time so we'll glue all that and with that we can then glue the bottom portion of the ring in which is definitely has to go in a certain angle because of the way the cuts are on it and once that lines up that'll just slide right in there we'll glue all that on and then we can glue the turret roof on as well so it's a, a pretty easy straightforward process and, and if we have any of these little gaps right here we can go over it with the the liquid cement and put a little liquid cement in there and hold these down we'll sand the edge off right here to get it nice and smooth like we've done on this side and you can also see that I've also attached the uh, the turret basket on the back as well there so I'm gonna put all these parts together and then we'll come back in a little bit and show you what it looks like okay and then just one other quick little note there is a photo etch with this kit for all the uh, the grills and another little note there is a front and the back and you can see I've got the front side down and you can see like the cross hatching of the weave on it now it comes wrapped in a plastic I would highly recommend removing only one side of the plastic that way it keeps the piece flat and smooth so you don't go knocking it into uh, anywhere or bending it any more than you might already do it is very very thin product so when you get the little nub on the end there you can easily sand it off with a even a sanding stick will will knock that edge down now I just glued this one into place so we just used regular CA cement 
uh, cyanacrylate and it sticks really well and it has a nice little finish to it. So that is the majority of the tank being built right now other than tools and, and of course the tracks on it. So I'm going to put just the final little pieces on. We're going to leave the tools off for now because we do want to paint those separately and attach them to the tank. And Oh, and uh, the other little thing is I started putting on the, uh, the track holders for the side and they just pop into place. So you just have to put the top ones on after we get the tracks all cut out and ready to go. Almost forgot, since we're talking about tools, Trumpeter is actually included in under some real close magnification, a bunch of wing nuts too. Uh, multiple sprues with wing nuts. So there's a lot of little areas that require like wing nuts to t attach something down. So they give them to you. So that is going to add some nice little bit of detail. And I'll point it out to you guys later on once we get the actual tools and pieces or whatever requires the wing nuts on it. But some real fine detail. Hopefully you can see it clear enough on there but it is look does look really nice well here we go here is uh, final construction we'll call it on the vehicle and the only thing that we need to still attach we, we need to obviously paint it of course but we've left all the tools and all the other little accessories off the vehicle and that's just because I find it much easier to put those into place after they've been painted and you're not worrying about getting paint on all the other surfaces. So you can see there's quite a bit of holes in the front there for doing uh, different things. I've used the can of Tamiya's Red Oxide Surface Primer on it and we sprayed that down to see if we had any flaws. I've gone over it once with a little bit of Vallejo putty. There's a, some little minor, minor things that I'm gonna touch up and fix before we start doing the paint job, but there are just some little areas on the Zimmerit that I just don't like the way the gap is. But for the most part, Everything uh, went on very, very quick and easy. And overall, the fit on this vehicle was very, very nice. Uh, everything just clicked together and no problems with construction other than, like I said, a few things that we're just gonna touch up right now. So, uh, we won't spend much time with the painting process on this because you guys have seen me paint German armor before. But what I'll do is we'll, we'll go ahead and paint this and then show you what it looks like once it's all done. After we put the uh, the first coat of dark yellow on, you can see we went over it with a little bit of putty and water and just fixed up any little areas that just looked a little bit weird. I know it looks a little bright right now, but it actually was just some minor, minor little, little things we wanted to fill. So we're going to put one more coat of dark yellow on now. Well, here we are. Here is our uh, mostly completed model, about 97% done. And you can see we've gone ahead and put the tools on and one set of Frule model tracks and did just some minor weathering on it after we, we touched up all the paint. But as we come around to the other side here, you'll notice that, that there are no more tracks on this side. And that was kind of my fault. I had planned right from the beginning to put this set of ATL-06 uh, Tiger One mid-late tracks on it. Saw this box in my pile over there, and when I pulled them out, 
I had forgotten that these were all my spare tracks. Because every time you build um, a set of Frula tracks, you're left with a certain amount of leftovers. And if you build enough of them, I think it's about four sets, you're, or three sets, you're left with enough to do a whole nother side. Well, all I had inside here were my leftovers. And I had enough just to build up one side. I also had enough to put the, uh, the spare track links up on the top. And these little five links right here just to elevate it so the tank sits level. And I ordered up um, three more sets of Tiger One tracks just to have, but they aren't going to be here for about two weeks. And I thought rather than delay the video because this is such a hot new kit out right now, I know I'm selling them like crazy here in my store, and I want to give people an idea of what the kit's about. So the tracks, the tracks in the kit, not a huge fan of. I showed you those earlier. They are not hollow horn, and there's a lot of cleanup. And I guess I could have put one of them on for right now, but it just seemed like so much work, and the quality is just not as good as the, the metal track. So we will eventually put another set of metal tracks on the other side, and we'll get this whole tank completed. But overall, I want to talk mainly about the vehicle itself and the the great quality that was involved with this kit i'm very very uh impressed with the uh, the quality that went into this there was all kinds of little ultra details that hopefully you can still see like the little wing nuts that i was showing you earlier that hold down all the tie downs on everything actually one of them popped off right there but you've got all the little wing nuts that tied all that stuff down the tools were molded very well the fit was very well all the way around and then of course the zimmerit the zimmerit i thought worked out very well uh it was it was easy to put on it matched up exactly the way it was supposed to it was just really really good and, and actually a, a pleasure to build this kit the kit was not crazy on the parts i do have to admit though by the time you got to the end when you're about ready to do the tools you thought oh well i'm i'm pretty much most of the way there but with all the little fine accessory parts it did uh take the timing a little bit longer to put on the rest of the things but nothing nothing that the average modeler couldn't do just a lot of tweezer work on it but very very nice kit and for under fifty dollars with the zimmerit very very great to have and i would also recommend going ahead and holding on to your spare zimmerit because this you'll be able to probably with multiple sheets of this cut up and use on other vehicles down the road so i've held on to my sheets and we'll see if we can play around with them too in fact what i might do is do an experiment to see if we can take some of that and damage it put it on a piece of uh, like styrene and just practice uh, you know damaging and things like that but uh, very very happy with the kit I uh, would re definitely recommend it for you that if you're looking for an easy to put together Zimmerit Tiger especially for the price and if you decide you don't want to spend the money on the uh, Frule model metal tracks, there's all kinds of other options out there. AFE Club makes some rubber band style. Tamiya has some plastic individual tracks. So uh, all different other types of options if you don't want to spend the money on those metal tracks. But um, overall, very, very good kit. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming. Now that we have the, the Tiger done and built up, uh, I wanted to show you guys, I just received in my new book from Wrighton on the Panther. Now you guys may remember, I have the original version of this, but you also may remember as well that I know the, the publisher from Wrighton and we were able to convince him to do a limited production run of another group of these books and I just got my copy in. I'm going to hold this one aside since I already have the other one. But the thing I wanted to talk to you guys about too is while I was building my, my Tiger Tank, I was consulting with my Tiger and Sturm Tiger in detail book. And this is another book that is just chock full of information clear uh, detail shots of the engine deck inside out everything you can imagine on the tiger and what i was just going to mention to you guys too as well as the sturm tiger as well uh, I've actually was talking to the uh, the publishers on this too, and this book has been out of print for a little while now too, and that if enough of you guys are interested, we can talk to them and see if they will do another reprint of this. Same guidelines as with the uh, the Panther book, you know, like forty five dollars, and it's just full full of information on it. And I use this all the time, especially all the tigers. And actually, from what I hear too, there's more tigers even coming. So. Uh, a great, great book that if you already have it, you know about how, how good the quality is on it. Just kind of showing you some of the brief shots inside here. 
But yes, if you are interested at the end of this video, right down in the descriptions, uh, maybe just put the word yes, interested in the Tiger book, something like that. And I can bring it to writing and tell them that yes, there is enough people that are interested in it. And we can get this uh, book reprinted. Yes, and if he does do a reprint on it, they're going to put a new cover art on here. Same book inside from top to bottom. It'll just be a, a limited reprint with a new cover art on it.